So I'm going to present my research entitled Blended Learning, an Intervention Approach for a Senior High School Students. So the true sign of intelligence is not knowledge but imagination, according to Albert Einstein. So year 2016, the Republic Act 10533 or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013 is fully implemented in the Philippines, supported by the Department of Education K-12 Basic Education Program. The senior high school curriculum as part of the K-12 program intends to produce graduates that are holistically developed, equipped with 21st century skills and prepared for the future. So the Philippines is just uh, starting the implementation of K-12 program. So we change our basic education from 10-year program into 12-year uh, program. Practical Research 1 is one of the applied subjects in senior high school curriculum which develops critical thinking and problem-solving skills of the students through writing a research. Magdalena Integrated National High School is one of the 5,965 schools who offer grade 11 program operated and funded by the government. The school was established in 2009 as Annex of Buena Vista National High School under the Department of Education Division of Laguna with a population of 1,042 junior high school students and 120 senior high school students or the pioneering senior high school students for school year 2016-2017. The school offers two tracks, academic track and technical vocational and livelihood program or track. This research aims to implement a blended learning approach as intervention in facilitating the class under practical research one to all pioneering senior high school students in Magdalena Integrated National High School. Uh, Brotherson and Meluso 2017 considered the emergence of web-based learning as a major trend in both K-12 and higher education and the combination of online and face-to-face -face instruction that offer differentiated learning options. Green and Hale 2017 studied the potential of electronically mediated learning or e-learning to effectively prepare students for the demands of 21st century citizenship through such learning environments which in theory support the growth of critical thinking and a personalized educational experience. Michelle Davis 2015 research entitled Blended Learning Research, The Seven Studies You Need to Know stated that the whole power of blended learning lies in its ability to personalize education to meet individual students' needs. Means et al. 2013 stated that studies using blended learning also intended to involve additional learning time, instructional resources, and course elements that encourage interactions among learners. The framework of this uh, blended learning is the combination of a uh, face-to-face -face class and an online class, meaning the traditional will be integrated by an online class. Rahu 2016 stated that educational benefits of blended learning are one, easier communication with students and easier distribution of course material to large groups of students. Two, submission and feedbacks and assessments are better to administer for educators and students. Three, personal interaction in the face-to-face -face session, facilitation of easier communication. And four, the online session includes activities tend to reinforce and improve the learning experiences of the students. Uh, this research aims to answer the following question. One, what are the identified difficulties of students in doing research activities in the subject? Two, what are the implementation activities of blended learning for senior high school students in practical research one? And three, what are the key results of the implemented blended learning to students in practical research one subject? The research is descriptive using quantitative type to explore and describe the result of using blended learning as intervention in teaching practical research one to senior high school students of the school. Survey, interviews, and observation were conducted to gather data for analysis and interpretation. Student performances using the final rating in the subject was also considered for analysis. The implementation requires to create an online class 
Edmodo was chosen as the learning management system that managed the class online. The class provides portal for all students and their teacher to communicate even outside the classroom. Computer access in computer laboratory is also essential for students to ensure that they can access the online class. Edmodo is an educational technology company offering a communication, collaboration, and intervention platform. The participants of the study um, is a total of 116 students, which is the total population of the pioneering senior high school students in the school. It was noted that the majority of the students belong to below average performances based on their previous report card, or generally students came from the low income class family, so majority of them do not have computer, uh, computer equipment on their own. The identified research activities of the subject in practical research one is based on the provided curriculum guide of the Department of Education designed for senior high school program. These are the one, preparation of research proposal, two, writing research documentation, three, oral research presentation, and four, submission of research documentation. This also supported by work workshop activities, which also align to the curriculum guide, there, these are the four, identifying inquiries, taking the problem, related literature, understanding data, and analyzing the meaning of the data and drawing conclusions. The implementation highlights of the study are, learners can access learning materials, research references provided by the teacher using the online class. Teacher can post announcement and guidelines in doing research activities. Learner can access the information through online class. Learners can take online quizzes anytime, anywhere. They can view the score results and correct answers in real time. The learner can also submit their assignment online even outside the class hours. The online class also allow learners to ask queries directly to teacher and teacher can answer them anytime, anywhere. Teacher provide opportunity for learners to submit output on the workshop activity, especially those who cannot comply in time even outside the class hours. Learners participation in an online discussion. Design workshop activities were used to help learners in doing research activities. Teachers can provide consultation and advices using the online class regarding learners' research. Learners can submit, submit research documentation online. All learners presented their research in an oral research presentation. And the research output, all of the students are submitted their research documentation. For the results, the difficulties uh, experienced with the students in the subject, practical research one, item number four, difficulty in writing a documentation, and number seven, Difficulty to present research output not the highest percentage among the respondents with a percentage value of 75%. The plan was composed of nine specific activities to integrate online class and workshop activities in the facilitation of the class for senior high school students. It started with creation of online class using Edmodo, design workshop activity forms, orientation of the online class, class in practical research one, Enrollment of students to online class for practical research one in four classes. Participation of students to online class, online discussion, online quizzes, and online submission of requirements. Workshop activities of the students. Monitoring and observation of students' deliverables. Oral research presentation and submission of research documentation. The participation of students to online class has a valuable contribution to their performance in the subject. There are 71.55% of the students participate in online discussion. 83.52% of the students participate in online quizzes. 36.99% uh, use the online class to, for personal inquiries related to the subject. And 100% of the students submitted the requirements using the online class for comments by the teacher. There are 100% of them complied with the requirements set by the subject, which is preparation of research proposal, oral research presentation, submission of research documentation. 
The performances of the students uh, got a passing mark in the subject, while 56.03% or 65 of the 116 students got 80% and above grade in the subject. Some of the students were asked uh, a question regard or was interviewed, what is your learning experiences in the subject? Some respondents answered, the workshop helped me to gain new knowledge regarding the subject. Student two said, even though it is my first time to do a research, I made it successful. Student three said, workshop two is essential because it gave us information that connect to our topic. And student four, it is a beautiful memory. And other students said, the online class helps me and serve as a new source of knowledge and experiences that I need as a 21st century learner. For the conclusion, blended learning helps to empower students and teachers in facilitation of the practical research one subject. Number two, the strategy provided an opportunity for teachers to maximize the power of technology through integration of online class and solve some identified problems experienced by students as well as teachers in teaching and learning process. Three, the seven identified difficulties encountered by students in the subject were addressed by guiding students through workshop activities and learning materials online discussion and online quizzes available and posted online. The online class can be accessed anytime and anywhere through computer access with internet connection. The online submission of documentation using a computer laboratory of the school helps students for not spending much on printing. The implementation of blended learning is composed of nine activities starting from creation of online class to submission of final research documentation. The 100% compliance of the students in the subject was evident that the blended learning is accepted by the students. Majority of the students participated in online activities managed by teacher in an online class. 71.55% of the students participated in online discussion, 83.52% participated in online quizzes, and 36.99% asked inquiries related to subject, and 100% submitted research documentation for comments. The computed mean value performances of all students based on their final rating in the subject is 82.75%, with the final mean value of the four classes 84.96, 84.86, 79.33, and 81.83 respectively. For the recommendation, a schedule of computer access with internet connection is in computer laboratory is recommended to support the blended learning implementation of the school. It was noted that all the participants, students, do not have their own computer. Training teachers to adopt the blended learning approach to prepare them in online class management, proper maintenance of computer laboratory, and upgrade the bandwidth of internet connection to ensure the continuous internet connectivity both to teachers and students. Implementation of blended learning to other subjects. And the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your wonderful presentation. And I think uh, uh, e-learning has become a trend already. Huh? And uh, <laughs> uh, we're uh, inter integrating technology into our classroom teaching instruction is uh, now a really a huge challenge. Overall, uh, many uh, high schools, I think also high schools in Taiwan, have tried all kinds of uh, instructional models, approaches, uh, try to help students learn uh, in either learning or friendly uh, learning approach. So I'm glad to see uh, such an interesting study. So uh, can we? Uh, so the next presenter will be uh, uh, Mr. Pana. Uh, Mr. Pana will talk about. Uh, uh, Remember uh, and enjoy the best uh, 3D argumented uh, reality uh, shooting games uh, for 50 of uh, Andy from the face, right? Using uh, boys, uh, blocking the over. So it sounds very technical. <laughs> uh, so are you a programmer? You uh, sound voice. Okay, not programmer. No, 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 I'm a, I'm a faculty. Uh, okay. So uh, can you please get to me? Okay, so good afternoon everyone. So uh, for the topic, remembering an Android-based 3D augmented reality shooting game, 
for history of Andrus Bonifacio using weights plotting algorithm. So it uh, sounds uh, very technical, but uh, this is something to do with a particular game integrated into a particular history of the Philippines. Okay, so to start with, Okay, for the introduction, games have become the fastest growing sector in the entertainment industry and it has done in a relatively short period of time. And for some people, the APAC is a felt worldwide and many people focus more on using their own gadget or technology to use for fun, entertainment, or something that could help them in any easy way, which leads them uninterested anymore in reading a book or a particular book. On the other hand, augmented reality has been quite in a while. It become, became more popular when Niantic Incorporated released Pokemon Go last 2016. And augmented reality is a live, direct, or indirect view of a physical real world environment whose elements are augmented by computer generated sensor. Sensory inputs such as sound, video graphics, or the GPS data. Therefore, this has become the problem among students and history teachers that can cause bad habit in learning history, especially produce a student with poor understanding about the history. The researchers propose remembering an Android the based 3D augmented reality to help address the particular problem, or this, the proposed study aims to give information about the history and at the same time entertains the user with the aid of a particular game. The study focuses on the study focuses the study focuses on the history of a particular uh, Filipino hero, which is Andres Bolifacio, to educate people about his past and contributions in the Philippines. The study is significant to the students who are having difficulties in the understanding history because it helps them to absorb information in a different and exciting way. History teachers can also get a high advantage using the proposed study because it be used as a tool and uh, especially topics that could relate the life of a particular hero. For the design and methodology, okay, for the RAD approaches emphasize adaptability and the necessity of adjusting requirements in response to knowledge in and the project progresses. Prototype are often used in addition for sometimes even in place of design specification. Uh, for the analysis and quick design, by analyzing the proposed topic, the researchers gathered information that surely helped them to conceptualize the proposed system and also they look for the resources to feed to the topic. Therefore, the researchers propose a system that would help the students of users about the history in a different way. The researchers made it in a point that aside from the system's functionality, the design was also attractive yet big deal to the users. The researchers conducted a research that could help them in improving their design and to have a confidence that it delivered and give a good concept and design that would lead into more effective system design, researchers used the Adobe Photoshop CS6 that is suitable for the system. For the prototype cycle, in this phase, the researchers integrated the concept design of the proposed system to both to build a game and researchers integrated the proposed system using Unity 3D. To demonstrate the system, the researchers need it at a point that the design is a user friendly and last the researchers undergo the refined phase examine and the result to all the possible changes. The system was constructed using Unity 3D and Adobe Photoshop DS6. For the testing proposed system was now fully developed, thus the researchers tried to test it in many times to, to know if there was a possible problem in the future time of using the system. Although all existing systems are developed have always a little error on it, but still they have should do their very best to make the system uh, free from error and uh, the researcher can make it more efficient and effective. And for the implementation, the researcher planning design the development and testing and debugging totally done. The researchers were now actually looking forward to the project implementation and to be uploaded in the Google Play Store. 
okay, for the game development, for the game development documentation. So, uh, the remembering is a game-based learning in a form of shooting game with augmented reality. This game is developed to achieve an uh, alternative way of learning of history of a particular hero. To make the possible, the researchers made a concept of a machine called the anima. The allows, uh, that allows reading in a, a subject of genetic memory. This machine is used in the game story that allows the, ma the main character to read the memory of his ancestor by acquiring remembrance are produced by the anima that contains a memory from the past. For the technical development document, initially the game is developed to, to, to be played in an Android mobile devices to reach the greatest possible customer base. The game is developed developed using C Sharp and Java language in Unity 3D and runs on Android Ice Cream Sandwich OS 4.0.3 with uh, a particular uh, specification, rear camera, and most important, the gyro, uh, gyrometer or gyroscope sensor. For a particular uh, fundamentals of algorithm, which is the voice plugging algorithm, the, uh, the researchers implemented voice plugging algorithm for the behavior of the, a particular character in a game, which is the virus. Voice plugging algorithm is an artificial life simulation originally developed by Craig Reynolds. The aim of the simulation was to replicate the behavior of a flock of a birds instead of controlling the interactions of an entire flock. For the results and the discussion, the summary of evaluation based on the IT expert for the uh, functionality, suitability, performance, usability, reliability, creativity, creativity, maintainability, portability, the result is all of those are excellent for the uh, acceptance for the IT expert. For the summary of evaluation based on the end user of a particular uh, user or target beneficiary, functionality, so, uh, suitability, performance, efficiency, usability, and reliability, with 4.96 at the same time for the interpretation of an excellent for their acceptance of our, uh, for the software product. And for the overall summary of evaluation based on the expert and end, the end user is 4.92 and the interpretation is as well as excellent. For the conclusion and recommendation, the proponents concluded that the study met the objective in fulfilling its task, developing a game that may provide information of a particular topic in a history, help the students who have difficulty understanding a particular history, achieving an alternative way of teaching history by means of a game, providing an accurate application that entertains the user through a shooting game with augmented reality, giving information about the uh, a history in life of a national hero. So this, uh, this will be the uh, interface of, of the game. So uh, the concept of this game is uh, based on the Pokemon Go. And this is the main character, which is the Andy and descendant of the national, Philippine national hero. Okay, for the... Okay, so the game is also available in Google Play. It can be downloaded. Uh, the title is Remembering. The face on the right side is the Philippine national hero, which is Andres Bonifacio. And then the, the character of the game is the Andy named Andy, the descendant of the Philippine National Hero. So it's also available in Google, Google Play. And then, uh, thank you. So, uh, so Pana, you are very efficient. Can you use uh, nine minutes uh, to uh, finish your presentation? Uh, so, uh, it's a very interesting uh, presentation, but uh, there's some uh, te technical uh, stuff uh, yeah. uh, I, I'm not so familiar, familiar with uh, the programming part. But anyway, we all know uh, you cannot teach a, a, a student who don't really want to learn. So the most important thing to help uh, a student learn is really to, uh, to motivate uh, their in, uh, internal interests. So uh, using game to help a uh, student learn history is a really interesting uh, approach. Uh, 
Uh, historical facts, sometimes, you know, a lot of historical facts, uh, you know, sometimes are boring. If, if you keep lecturing like a uh, traditional classroom, a uh, history teacher, and to lecture on and on, sometimes uh, students, students will probably fall uh, asleep or space out. You know? So I think the using game is really a, a good approach. But something to think about the uh, using game is uh, there's a dilemma between uh, uh, fun learning and uh, serious learning. Sometimes uh, too much fun also uh, makes students uh, kind of uh, uh, lose track of uh, what they, they are supposed to learn. So some, maintain some kind of civic seriousness uh, may be also important. Uh, so uh, perhaps we should give time to our first presenter. Uh, it's uh, Dr. Ray, right? So Dr. Ray will be uh, talking about uh, uh, design of a digital game-based learning system uh, for vocabulary enrichment using an uh, input process uh, outcome game model. Uh, uh, sounds an uh, interesting model. Uh, so it's also a, a, a kind of game-based learning. Uh, so looking forward to hearing your presentation. Okay, um, good afternoon everybody. Um, thank you for staying and joining us in this session. So, um, for my study, okay, by the way, I'm Elaine Teret, I'm from Malayan Colleges Laguna. Um, I also teach information technology, just like the previous presenter. And um, for, our, for the study, um, this is in partnership also with um, teachers in elementary um, because as I mentioned we are IT uh, professionals or we are we're, we're teaching IT so therefore for, for enable to, for us to design a game such as this just like that you mentioned we need to somehow partner you know, with experts we may know the um, IT part on how to develop the game but then in terms of theory and in terms of content, then we need to partner you know, with um, the language expert in our case. Okay, so to, to start now with my presentation, so this would be my outline. Now, um, it's already a fact that technology has become a universal part of students' classroom experiences. In our case, in our school, um, we also use learning management system wherein students can just download the, the resources that they use for classroom. So in the Philippines, uh, we have that already. Aside from the learning management system, there are different applications that the students can download and then use it um, for learning. Okay. So aside from LMS, we have interactive learning environments, and of course we have uh, intelligent tutoring systems. Now, in recent years, okay, games are also being used as instructional tools in education. Um, uh, you may, there are some, uh, some um, uh, sectors you know, that oppose um, games to be used in, in instructions. But in this particular study, we actually use a, a framework okay, for us to develop the game. Okay, now, um, uh, the problem now with ITS is that um, this uh, ITS provides direct and customized instruction and transmit the knowledge to the students through an interactive individualized process. However, its goal is only to teach specific content knowledge and skills and not how uh, people relating to fun because that is according to Prensky, okay, students tend to game the system if the design is only into teaching specific content knowledge and skills. So the principal roles of fun in the learning process are to create relaxation and motivation. In this case, games can help motivate the students to learn about certain things and assist them in learning a skill as they play. So in other words, motivation of the games could be combined with curricular content, which is called digital game-based learning, or others call it serious games. 
Now, the main objective of the study is to design and develop a vocabulary enrichment uh, digital game-based learning system for elementary students using input process outcome game model by Garis. So, as I mentioned, it's, it's design and development. So, meaning we need to actually integrate this framework to the game that we need to develop. It is actually for its input, instructional content, and then game characteristic. I'll be discussing on that in a while. And then for the process, you have the game cycle, which is user judgment, user behavior, system feedback, and of course, the briefing to coming up with a learning outcome. The idea here is of course to have a positive learning outcome. But to, to have the learning outcome, we need to have the right input and as well as the process, which must be incorporated in the game. Now, uh, the game cycle included user behavior, I already mentioned that. Aside from uh, conducting a pre-test and post-test to, to the students who participated in the study, um, we all, for the uh, user acceptance part of the, of the game, um, we need to measure also you know, the satisfaction of, of the students. And uh, a deductive approach was used in the objective of verifying a theory rather than developing it. So collects data to test it and reflects on the confirmation or disconfirmation of the theory by the results. Thus the theory becomes the framework of the study, making this a quantitative study. So just to give you an overview of how we were able to integrate the game design, for the input, for the instructional content, as I mentioned, um, we partnered with the school, okay, and then we asked the uh, language teachers, okay, to provide uh, the knowledge and concepts. We need to get there, uh, uh, at least to, to, to make the content valid, okay, and then certain examples of features for the vocabulary enrichment are through definition of a word and how to correctly use it in a sentence. Uh, aside from the content, we have also incorporated character building. So questions are tailored to imply self-consciousness. Um, so again, for the character building part, we ask also the, the help of the teachers in the elementary school. And then the game-based learning system is constructed to be a question and answer and role-playing approach. Now, for the input, uh, for the game characteristics, um, in this particular game, uh, the student uh, would actually be selecting no, a, a role. Okay, so they you have you can see there a character, so they can select no, which role or which character to choose. And then of course, just like any game, we have rules that we set of course or embedded in the game. So the idea for the game is. Um, the user must avoid contact with the virus and then they need to acquire a number of correct answers to proceed to the next stage. Okay, so there are four stages no, of the game and then with every incorrect answer, the virus will come closer until it comes in contact with the player and eventually get infected. That's the name word infection. Word infection is actually a... we. This is an original name no, for, for, for the, this group, okay? Um, you may check out also, uh, there's also a, a mobile version of this, but this one is uh, a PC-based this time, okay? Because I have presented the mobile version in another conference. Now for the sensory stimuli, okay, so we have colorful and sharp imagery, and we, we also have included sounds, okay, which can be turned on and off, now depending on the user. Challenge, uh, we have different levels, we have per game, uh, we have easy, average, and difficult, okay, so um, you will see later in the result, no, some of the students, their comments are, uh, are, are of course, they had difficulty in answering, you know, the, the last part, which is, of course, the difficult part of the game. 
uh, for the mystery, it's more on the application. You know, a scenario will be given, and then students would, of course, use their critical thinking okay, to provide answers. And then for control, uh, students uh, actually can choose what costume they will use uh, to, to add fun. They also had an, op an option to make use of the hint. So we have provided a hint. So you will see that here, so we have a hint uh, which can be clicked, okay, to, to help them, you know, to answer the, the question. And for the user judgment, it can be reflected in the achievement of the role that the user plays. The students can obtain the knowledge and word infection by completing the stages within the levels by determining whether what the correct answer is depending on what type of question. So aside from uh, showing the levels here, we have actually four levels. They need to start with one uh, uh, stage. No? We have, so we have four stages actually. We have classroom, playground, and canteen, and then gym. You can also see here a summary of their performance. And for the user behavior, this now would refer to the uh, patience no, of the students because if they would not get a certain percentage, they need to repeat a particular uh, level, okay? Because what we did with the game design is we made this sequentially. They need to finish the drill and pass the drill before they can move on to the next. And for the system feedback, at the end of a particular stage or level, they will be given uh, the feedback and then um, showing you know, their scores. And then to review, we have also incorporated a uh, definition of terms for, of course, retention. And uh, the briefing, uh, it's the review and analysis of events that occur in the game itself. So we have that in challenge and learning knowledge, okay, which refers to accepting challenges, can enhance the user's vocabulary, vocabulary knowledge. A successful challenge can increase the points accumulated by player or gain an extra life as a reward. So scores are also computed, no, in the, the scores of the students are already computed, are also computed, and then if uh, they were able to accumulate uh, certain points, um, for motivation, they are also given rewards. And the guideline and learning pertains to when after answering all the questions in a stage, the system will evaluate the user and provide the correct answers for reviewing uh, purposes. So I've, I've shown you that the interface a while ago. Now for the methodology, uh, we have selected actually one private institution. We have selected them based on the following criteria. They, of course, should have technologies because we need to install the game uh, in their computers. And then um, we have selected all for uh, great students of the school, so there are actually 34. And uh, uh, we also asked some uh, computer um, uh, background, so 77% of the students own a computer at home. And then we have also prepared uh, a survey instrument which consisted of questions concerning students, personal information, and computer literacy. A teacher made test was requested. This is for the pre-test and post-test. The test types were categorized for difficulty. We have easy, average, and difficult. And for the types of assessment, for the easy, we have multiple choice for average, fill in the blanks. And then for the difficult part, we use context clues. And then uh, aside, of course, from knowing uh, the pre-test and post-test, we have conducted also a user acceptance testing to ask the level of agreement of respondents. We use a Likert scale. And there's a 15-item question, uh, which includes usability concern, which refers to the ease of use of the system. Because, of course, uh, as, as uh, we have developed the game, we need to know uh, if they're able to use it with ease. Okay, So that's also a concern of, of the game. Um, because remember that the idea here is for us to have a feedback of our design of the game. It's not actually just the performance of the students, but how easy uh, or how um, easy uh, and uh, how useful no, is the game to the students. 
Now, um, for the results and analysis, what you can see here is actually very interesting. The, the red line is the pre-test, and then the post-test is actually, uh, the, the, the red line is actually the pre-test, and the blue line is the post-test. And if you would notice, to begin with, the students are already familiar with some of the terms. This portion here, 1 to 5, is actually the level, uh, the easy questions, and then from 5 to 9, that's actually for the middle, uh, the, the average questions, and then from here to the last, that's actually for the difficult questions. So what's interesting about this is, notice that the pre-test is actually higher than the post-test. Okay, but however, at the latter part of the game, what you, what you can see is that they have actually gained something. Okay, I think I have a few minutes. So anyway, so results and analysis, percentage of agreement on the usability. Okay, so that's an objective also of this game. So interesting is that overall, they said they are satisfied, so they're 89%. Okay. And they had a difficulty in entering answers, I think, especially for the, the part where they need to, uh, to enter their uh, answer. And then for the agreement on the usefulness, uh, you, can, you can see here that it's 65%. And that the chat, in the, I believe in the challenge part, we were able to maybe accomplish something here because they say, it was actually difficult no, for the game, no, for their age. And then for the game elements, uh, they like the avatars that we have included, 70% uh, for the design. Game stories, it's 57%, which is actually what we did here is, uh, we have improved that no, in the next version of the, the game. Okay, we need to improve that actually in the next version of the game. And then also unlocking the avatars, and overall, the place uh, levels in the game look enjoyable and fun. Now, as for the conclusion, as you can see with the results, um, there's still need, uh, there's room for improvement. Definitely, we still need to work with the stories because for the fourth grade students, they find the stories very long. Okay, so that's one. Uh, in terms of, let me just go back. In terms of uh, the usefulness, as you can see, we need also to, to check on the, the questions that were uh, incorporated in the game no? for the content, okay? Because the, they said, they claimed that the difficult part is actually very difficult, but if you would notice with the results, because it's very difficult, uh, the, the latter part of the game, they were actually very serious in answering. And if you've noticed, they were able to gain something, okay? And for the future direction of the study, there's actually a, another ver a, a version of this, a new version of this, um, wherein we have included the pedagogical agent, and we are moving into uh, data analytics already. Aside, of course, from the result, aside, of course, from the, um, the the learning gain of the students, we actually would like to process no, the uh, their behavior online, such as how fast they would answer the game, because from there we can actually check if they are just uh, gaming the system, because that is already a concern, and then. Um, since this is a private, we use this in a private school, maybe in the future we would like to test this also in public schools in the Philippines, okay? And uh, incorporation, incorporation of effective computing because that can be done also in computer science. Okay, so we'd like to know if they're really fun because in this case we just use, we just ask for their perception, no? But, uh, with the use of effective computing, the idea is actually uh, we can uh, rate or observe if they are really happy when they're using the game. So that would be all. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Dr. Ryan. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Reddy, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, so, uh, game-based learning, I know, it, uh, is a uh, very competitive. A lot of people are designing games, uh, but uh, new games keep coming up. Okay, so I would say how difficult it is. Uh, also, you are uh, spending a lot of time trying to uh, using research to gather evidence to support your your uh, the effectiveness of your game. That's really impressive. Yeah, uh, using games to help learners have uh, many benefits. Uh, like uh, I just said, you know, can can help uh, motivate students. Uh, but also can make students more uh, likely to present to them uh, self-directed uh, learning or some kind of self-help. So uh, rather than sitting in class, become the passive uh, knowledge receiver, they can be highly uh, active or interactive, uh, uh, trying to you know address challenges and presented by the games or try to you know problem solve, solve problems uh, uh, in the game. Uh, so something uh, uh, is. Uh, that are coming in the future, there will be more and more uh, game-based learning. So thank you so much for your presentation. So uh, uh, so let's welcome the uh, last but uh, not least uh, presenter, uh, Professor Ruiz. Right. Right? Yes. Oh. Okay. Hello everyone. Let me greet you in our own language. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. So you learned something new today. Um, for the past four years, we've been sending our students abroad in the U.S., yet no one attempted how effective is the program, and no one uh, assessed, at the same time, the kind of learning experience by the students. So we hope the proponents opted to come up with a study entitled The Learning Experience in International Internship, Reflections of Tourism and Hospitality Management Students. Uh, our school, I'm proud to say that our school is uh, one of the premier uh, institutions located in the southern part of the Philippines, Malayan Colleges Laguna. We're known for offering engineering courses. Um, we're also known for espousing outcomes-based education, promoting uh, teaching and learning innovation student center. Okay, for the introduction, uh, the Commission of Higher Education of the Philippines, or known, also known as a chat under Article 1, Section 1, developed and mandated the school's institution uh, to promote student exchange by creating strong linkages with business and industry in other countries for cross-cultural training and skill enhancement enabling Filipino to prepare Filipino students to be more competitive for employment, both local and abroad. So in support to this undertaking, the Malayan Colleges Laguna, our institution, support this program, okay? So what is this program all about? So during summer, the students uh, can have the chance to participate in this program. This is a three-month program where students have the opportunity to work as an intern in the U.S. Okay, so this uh, runs for three months, and after that, uh, some interesting factors uh, they said the program uh, allowing students to gain more uh, friends, uh, it enhances their communication skills, and at the same time, they can earn. Uh, they can earn while they're working. All right, so we as an educator fulfills an important task in the learning process of the students. So thereby, as an uh, institution, we should be engaged in a conducive action uh, that focus on cultural sensitivity, especially for sending our students abroad. All right, so the objective of the study, as I mentioned earlier, to determine the life experience of students in an international internship program, to assess how effective this, is, uh, this program in terms of cultural adaptation of the students, and to provide valuable data for colleges, internship agencies, or the sponsoring organization to develop a better approaches and comprehensive system for internship programs. Now, related literature. All right, so uh, we all know that internship uh, provide the learning opportunities for undergraduate uh, to experience professional practice and activities associated with knowledge application. 
Likewise, uh, internship is a profession oriented that promotes, uh, uh, that prepares students to work related skills and expertise in their future career. All right. Uh, the theoretical framework of this study uses the uh, transformational learning theory. This is developed by uh, uh, Mesero uh, in 1990. According to Mesero, okay, this is the kind of framework particularly for understanding the experience of students who experience cultural dis uh, cultural. Uh, this equilibrium, encountering feelings of marginalization and navigating new educational and cultural trade involving, involving learning process. Actually, this theory develops uh, in 1990 in the field of adult, uh, adult education, where it emerged as a powerful uh, image for uh, on how student or how adult learn. Okay, and apart from that, Transformational learning theory is not just about acquiring knowledge, knowledge, but rather making meaning, and such meaning is making sense or giving coherences, coherence to our experiences. For the conceptual frame, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, additionally, this transformational learning theory developed by Mesero undergoes three phases. One starts with content reflection, and that uh, pertains to thinking about the experience. Next phase should be a process uh, reflection, thinking on how they're going to handle the situation. And the last is uh, premise reflection, wherein examining long held closely the socially uh, constructed assumption, uh, the beliefs, values, based on the experience or problems encountered by the students. For the conceptual, uh, sorry, operational framework, the study uh, uses the cross-cultural adaptab adaptability inventory or CCA, uh, CCAI developed by Kelly and Mayer, 1995. This kind of, uh, this is an assessment use. Okay, okay, I'm talking too fast, sorry. So this assessment uh, usually used to a new transition into new uh, surrounding, uh, primar primarily to uh, for the readiness of an individual to study or work abroad. And it says that it is an effective use uh, to describe on the cultural adaptation of an individual. All right. So what is this uh, four domains all about? Let me explain. By emotional resiliency, this uh, measures the ability of the person to handle stressful feelings, uh, which bounce back from setbacks, and its effectiveness in dealing with new people into new situations. The flexibility and openness, openness this um, uh, interpersonal orientation in the context uh, of curiosity and respect, Okay, it's an essential characteristic of the a person to ready to listen to others, to be acquainted with them, and seek to understand the viewpoint of others. Perceptual acuity, this uh, pertains to the verbal, uh, this pertains to the ver both verbal and non-verbal cues. In the context of social relationship, is uh, necessarily important more than language proficiency, it underscores the uh, con communication confidence to be able to converse across cultures. And personal autonomy, these are the personal changes or identity the students have on their beliefs, values, in relation to living and interning with a new environment. So I hope uh, you understand this operational framework. All right, let me continue. Related studies. Bati and Lupi 2012 conducted a similar study uh, which entitled Reflection of Student on Student Interns Cultural Awareness Developed Through a Shortened International Internship. 
uh, there's funded uh, about, there are about 1,600 graduate students. And based on the study, uh, according to BAT and LUPI students were able to work ahead and able to address the challenges and clearly driven by all of their personal values and expectations. And several scholars uh, came out with another study that internship uh, had some positive outcomes. According to Beck and Talk, that's her 2017, internship further enhanced the employability of graduate through demonstrating their ability to cope with the circumstances of the business world. And Smyrna 2017 cited, it enables, help students uh, per, learn firsthand whether a career or interest is a good fit, and students became more independent as they're able to figure things out on their own. Apparently, several scores cited some negative uh, effect or issues on challenges on internship. That according to Ilagan et al. 2013, students experience culture shock, language barrier, social discrimination, and find hard time in working with different personalities and races. And Sa Summit of 2017 cited that some of the negative, uh, negative uh, encountered by the students were able to have homesick, feeling out of place, and difficulty in reconciling expectation or the reality gaps. And some issues are generally related to language difficulties, adaptation to a new learning system, psychological problems such as homesickness, discrimination, and feelings isolated, as well as socio-cultural problems, according to Cheng and Newton, 2002. All right. So my, the methodology of the study, there is this, uh, a qualitative research design was adapted to explore the topic in depth. A case study is a research approach that is used to generate an in-depth, uh, multi-faceted multi understanding of complex issue in a real context. And for the res respondent selection, this was conducted among uh, four BS tourism and, and five hospitality students of uh, Marine Colleges Laguna who underwent internship in the United States of America from between March to May 2017. For data gathering and research instrument, uh, the uh, researcher conducted an interview among the respondents and in a series of recorded focus group discussion which lasted to 45 minutes to an hour. An interview guide with semi-structured questions adapted from related literature was used to utilize to gather data. And for data analysis, the researchers made use the skills of Kelly based on the related uh, literature of cross-cultural adaptability. And this is the way to organize and analyze the qualitative data from the students' transformation and learning experience through interview. Results and discuss, discussion. So the results were presented based on the four scales of CCAI. So these are some interesting results. So after the interview, it was categorized and uh, was coded, and this the different team emerged. Oh, so students able to cope with stress and and, and be un, sorry you know, and ambiguity. All right. So some interesting response. The challenge in dealing with a different culture was something I had to comfortable with, such as the nature of America's for being straightforward and honest as compared with the sensitive nature of the Filipinos. All right, so in terms of flexibility and openness, they're able to tolerate the feeling of others and judgmental attitude towards new experiences. In terms of personal activity, Contrary to their expectation, language was not a barrier among the students. The students are confident in the use of English. In terms of uh, personal autonomy, personal identity independent of environmental indication. This is the most interesting part. The internship experience helped me realize that I can be a strong person and can live independently where I can live on my own without my family and friends. 
enabling to push myself to move outside my comfort zone. In conclusion, so the current study highlighted the inner landscape of student experience, experiences within the framework of transformational learning theory. The learning experiences shared by the students resulted in some interesting and com compelling international intercultural development and find it very valuable, which leads to a trans total transformation in regards to life perspective. The student overcame their peer anxieties that pertains to emotional resiliency. There was an increase in their self-confidence, adaptability, flexibility, and positivity, or flexibility and openness. Students were able to enhance their communication skills and promoted com camaraderie. Majority of the students became more independent, able to set a new direction, and develop having a positive attitude and focus on their desired careers. Being independent, deciding for oneself, and living on their own, Away from their respected families was the most appreciated experience that the interns have realized. All right, so a recommendation, so more opportunities for students to detail and narrate the experiences. Rather than feeling disempowered, silenced, or discouraged as a result of students' experiences, working in a creative learning environment may contribute to students gaining a more optimistic vision of the power of education to affect change in positive ways. Further, the college should initiate more soft skills training to improve the student's attitude of reliability and imbibing sense of responsibility in handling the task assigned. The program should also consider other places enabling students to learn and experience diverse cultures. Further studies are recommended by comparing greater numbers of students' experiences across different schools districts locally, nationally, and internationally, and among diverse cultural contexts, research in which the body of literature in this area. So the study has some limitations. This is limited only to third-year undergraduates of tourism and hospitality management program because of time and cost issues also influence the data collection. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Lewis. Uh, well, it's a very interesting uh, study. Uh, you know, we we we, uh, we use to. Uh, I mean, most of the uh, education start educational study are usually concerned about uh, formal education, formal learning. And this uh, international uh, internship uh, program is uh, has a lot uh, to do with uh, informal learning. Yeah. And uh, in terms of twenty first twenty first century skills. Uh, Many people uh, argue that uh, uh, important skills such as collaboration and uh, critical thinking and career planning and pro uh, cross cultural and understanding are all very important. And I, I think this kind of uh, program do help students learn a lot, acquire a lot of such skills. Uh, very interesting. Uh, so I think we still have about 20 minutes uh, for uh, Q and A. So uh, let's try to. Entertain a few questions. <laughs> so, um, sorry for that. Because because I came in late, so I, I just excuse me for asking any questions. I'm very interested uh, on hearing about serious. Uh, we call it serious games. Actually, there's such a term. Serious game. Yeah, it's called mm -hmm. serious games. Yes. Um, and uh, there's quite a lot of research done mm -hmm. in uh, games, game-based learning. Um, and so um, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, uh, in asking you two questions and uh, as I was listening to you, uh, the first one, um, let me look, game-based learning for vocabulary and the other one was, uh, it's a pity I didn't get to see the, the game, aspects of the game uh, as you described the technicality. The first one or second one? The, 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 the one about uh, Anna, the, the, Anna. The, the technicality. Well, the first one is, uh, is a Google Play Store. The, the augment, augmented reality, right? Um, when you talk about shooting game to to in order to, to teach about history, I was trying to imagine what it looked like because uh, one of the reasons is because when you know um, you see um, because uh, I, I tried to design a game for corporate learning uh, together with uh, the technical people. 
So my question specifically, other than trying to visualize what your game looks like, is in a collaborative uh, game-based learning design, uh, uh, whose who's, uh, opinion takes precedence? Serious games have not taken off, I think, you know? I mean, it, uh, before I disappeared, I was very into this, and I was discussing how to design it. I went to, I went to Media Corp's, uh, you know, uh, talk in Singapore about serious games and so on. So, um, uh, there are two parts, and you rightly say, there is uh, the instructional, the, the technical, the technical people. And then there's a domain expertise, which is the content. And um, the uh, instructional designers say we know everything, we know how to do it. Uh, and uh, frankly speaking to me, what came out was more the, uh, you know, the uh, amateurist, you know, like, uh, like uh, you know, if, if, if killing off people and things like that and all that. But the, how do you, how do you, who takes, who takes priority in the leading the, such a project? Because the, for the domain expert, uh, it has to be serious. It has to communicate certain aspects. And then my, I have to combine the two questions. Feel free to answer. Yeah? The, the, the other one is about vocab vocabulary. Yeah, I was very interested in learning uh, about. And again, I, I, you know, I had a slightly better idea of how you, you know, how you design it. Um, for vocabulary, again, the same question. Uh, you did invite uh, collaborators, right? And so, uh, how did you then upgrade the game, you know, with the content? It's always about context and ups upgrading and so on. So I'm, I'm just interested in how you collaborated with the domain experts. Um, uh, can I uh, play a particular video for, uh, for the interface of the game? Oh. I'm happy to see it. <laughs> So while you are at the maybe uh, the best way, would you like to answer the second question? Okay, thank you for the question, Ms. Jen. <laughs> um, in software development, uh, if, when using an agile approach uh, for the development of the software, uh, the biggest factor would be the um, collaboration of the stakeholders. In this case, uh, our main stakeholder would be the expert, okay? Because we are doing the system for them. Um, we're not the I'm not no I'm not the language teacher, and I'm not teaching grade four students. So therefore, we needed someone, okay, to help us that uh, uh, to help us with the design of the game. So what do we do? Uh, we we visited their their place. Okay, and then go through the design, and then test, and then show them again the prototype, and then they would give also inputs as to how you know, to, to improve the game. Uh, in our case, that's the reason why we have integrated character building, because I have no way of knowing that that is introduced in the elementary uh, School in elementary, uh, in elementary, or in particular in grade four. So those are their um, somehow um, uh, uh, inputs to, to the system before we actually use that to our uh, to their students. Okay, for this, uh, this is the interface of the particular game in the augmented reality. It's like a combination of a, a game and. Uh, some uh, topic in history in the Philippines. So this will be the uh, teaser. Looks like this walk has allowed 
Alice Kemp has a lot of work to do with uh, war history. Right? Yeah. That's my guess. Actually, it's very interesting. Uh, you tell it to me. Uh, human history, war is uh, you know, it's very a, nice. Yeah. An avoidable part of it. He, he actually mentioned in uh, Google Play Store. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can. Yeah, you can. You can actually, actually the study is a uh, student and faculty collaboration. Mm -hmm. I would also like to show also the effort of the Is this part of the game? No, it's just the uh, teaser part of the uh, presentation. Actually, the game is benchmarked in a particular game, which is the Pokemon Go. It's very attention to the Okay, so that is the story of one of the Philippine national heroes, which is Andres Bonifacio. And the history of Andres Bonifacio integrated to a particular game, which is... And uh, the Pokemon Go is the uh, one of the uh, inspiration uh, inspiration game to create the particular game. So that is our school, University of the Tenduka. And those are the students who develop the game. And and that is it. That is the yes. Story, the storyline of the particular game. So when you say shooting game, that uh, is the shooting game, and those characters are the uh, viruses, and it looks like a brain. The story is uh, part, uh, the storyline is that is the story on uh, how the uh, the history of Andres Bonifacio, one of the Filipino national heroes, and that is the virus. The integration of the shooting game is to know about the history. It's more like a Pokemon. You know, Pokemon there is a game, right? Game is competing to take territories, but in between they have a lot of uh, subject based, okay, okay. you know, multiple uh, you know, multiple choices uh, questions. Maybe. Uh, okay. Thank you. I, I'm not so I'm not so sure whether you know the popular game in Taiwan developed by. Uh, National Taiwan University is called Pokemon. Uh, uh, basically, you mean it's produced by Taiwanese? Pardon? Pokemon is produced I mean, by Taiwanese. Pokemon. Uh, oh, uh, okay. So, uh, it's more like, a, you know, uh, learning from textbook is, uh, is boring, right? Uh, a lot of uh, historical and medical facts. Uh, so, in order to encourage students to read from textbook, they design a game. The, game, the purpose of game is to take care of, uh, to invent other people's territory. So by competing with that, each, uh, each other, by uh, in order to gain your, your territory, you need to answer the question right. I think there's a lot of games that uh, are nice, uh, very, very much like this, like mathematical game. Mm -hmm. Prodigy mm -hmm. is a similar mm -hmm. So uh, Dr. Wei, you, you, you want to show something about your video, right? So I, I'm not so sure whether you, your question has been fully addressed, but I mean, later maybe we can show you. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. 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 More deeper in depth discussion. So, uh, I'm, I'm not so sure uh, whether anyone here also have other question. Yes, please. Uh, uh, but, but, uh, Pardon? Uh, because time is so limited, I, I, I would like everybody have a chance to ask question. Uh, 
um, while um, Doc Lenny is preparing for that, may I ask Doc Lenny if that game is patterned after Johnny Grammar? Because I have a game in my cell phone and it's called Johnny Grammar and it's about um, where you have an option whether you want to go um, for spelling or grammar or for words which has four categories. Uh, um, there are a lot of games actually uh, with the same with the same concept, but our concept would be in this case uh, we have quite a, a a name no for for the game, but it's actually based on different uh, games because this is also a faculty driven um, research where we need to work with with students who are taking up computer science uh, computer science degree and that. Uh, they need to develop a system such as this one. So I, I worked with them and I mentored them so that we, we were able to uh, design and develop this game. And then the follow-up question, has there been a follow-up um, study on this to, to know the effectiveness? If it indeed in uh, up to what percent is the vocabulary enriched by playing this game? Thank you. Okay. Uh, actually, that's a good question. Um, right, uh, what we're trying to do is to try to perfect the design of the game, not yet its effectiveness. Little by little, we're doing that. We started with this one. Notice that this one is we have actually measured their, their performance, and aside from the performance, we ask their satisfaction of the game. But as you can see, there's still a lot of things to do to, to improve. But since uh, now we have analytics, we have big data, we have AI, this is part of AI actually. So we, act, we for the design, we're actually incorporating learning analytics already, or uh, it's called educational data mining, okay? So we have that also in education. So it's the application of analytics already in uh, game-based learning. So this one was done in 2014, and the next version of this game, actually we have integrated affective computing, uh, affect, affect computing. Um, in that particular study, we actually observed how the students uh, reacted while they're using the game. Because um, asking their perception after using the game is somehow not enough. We need to really want to capture so the moment they're actually playing the game and how they would react. The game is actually good to be used for kids because you would really see their, their reaction. They, they're really happy, they're clapping their hands. I uh, just forgot to show the picture, but I have pictures of uh, those kids. So that's the actually you know, the, the second version of this game when we improve that. Um, actually, it's going through image processing that's also computer, an area in computer science. But we have also some problems when it comes to the facilities in the school, okay? But before going to that, right now, we're, what we do is actually that game we prepare that we are able to down, to, to retrieve you know, from the database the actual lives of the students. Um, we're actually, um, computed for the for the number of seconds on how they use the hints or how uh, on how uh, how long they answer a particular question and that can be done you know, with this game so those are the uh, updates with this game maybe just like miss Jen I can present that next year <laughs> so uh, you have a question right oh, so uh, you ask the question maybe later you can present Thank you for the presentations. Uh, I have a general question for, for all presenters. Uh, if, um, what would you suggest for teachers if uh, how students, how teachers help students if they face challenges and have negative feedback about the learning? Thank you. Well, it's a general question, huh? so, you're asking about effective feedback. Is that negative, 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 negative feedback from students? Negative feedback from students. Yes. 
regarding the use of technology. How you learning when they have negative learning experiences, no matter it's e-learning or So you're asking about the negative feedback they experience regarding the technology that we yes. conducted. So based on, on my study, it's about implementation of blended learning among the senior high school students. Uh, the problem first is uh, I'm the, the subject is public senior high school. And uh, uh, all participants are uh, belong to uh, low income class. So all of them do not have their own computer. And the uh, first initiative when I try to integrate uh, e-learning, because I have problem, the subject is practical research one. Uh, we don't have enough resources. Uh, the library is not that um, uh, installed properly. So what I think is the internet, the online learning, the online resources. Uh, has it, the students are very hesitant to use the, the online learning because they don't have computer, they don't, they're, they're not that used to that technology. So they, they cannot use the, they cannot access. So what I, uh, at first, you know, uh, that's the first impression. But uh, uh, when we, the, the solution is the computer laboratory was maximized. Uh, I, I prepared a schedule uh, during their break time. Uh, to use the computer laboratory with internet connection so that they can be they can use it free because they don't have enough much money to spend renting outside so I think that's uh, that's it and then uh, again um, at first uh, they have problem with uh, references or collecting data but uh, the solutions for that is the teacher for example me I post some link already which when they use the, the computer in the laboratory, they just click the link and then they can use that. So I think that negatives. And then you have to empower them through online discussion. I, I created the online class. Uh, you have to provide online discussion to empower them with topic that they will participate. And they love it. They love to participate in online discussion. And uh, you will amaze that uh, in the face-to-face -face session, these students not answering, it's not participating. But when you try to to check the online class, oh, uh, she said something. You, you learn from them when you read. Uh, even outside the class hours, I'm, I'm, I have a good spa, and I check my online <laughs> class, and I read their their answers and uh, they submit their their requirements i i i also give feedback right away and then they they, they love it they they want the the initial feedback the, those are so thank you so uh, well actually in our setup in the university of the university of uh, also uh, most of the students doesn't like to go to the school and meet their professor face to face. They also wanted to uh, use the technology per se to just to do the uh, uh, just to have their study uh, using the different kinds of e-learning platforms such as Edmodos, Goology, Quipper, Google Classroom. And most of the students are uh, very techy. <laughs> they are very techy nowadays, and they doesn't uh, uh, want to meet their professor face to face anymore. <laughs> And I don't know why. What's uh, what's the matter? And uh, the uh, the students nowadays are very when it comes to utilizing the resources online, they are very uh, using it very well. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, I have a lot of I have a lot of things to say, but one word: attitude counts or attitude matters. That's the way to encourage students. Okay, despite heavy, uh, despite challenges, negative challenges, but the moment attitude have imbibed the soft skills training, integrating this in their values, that would exactly or definitely overcome the negative challenges they may face. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I think we still have an option. Do you want to trace this question? Um, uh, the problem right now, you know, in, in the Philippines is, of course, not just like what we mentioned about. Uh, Fourth industrial, fourth industrial Revolution is that 
the the teacher somehow you know, they must improve or do some you know learning okay to for them to adapt you know, to the technology uh, in, in in our case now with us with our school uh, in Malaya Cajus Laguna it's good that we do community based extension services because through these um, activities we get to invite we get to invite public school teachers with their students. In our case, in particular, with this game, we allow, we, we invited um, two sections of grade four students from a public school. Um, they were there. They use it for an hour and a half. And then the teachers, the, the, the teachers, they saw the game. They were able to ask questions about the game. And since the content is in in, in, in this is English, what they want is they're actually requesting for the same game, but this time they want it Filipino, which is the local language of the Philippines. Because we may have that in a, 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 a game like that for, for language, why not having it in our own language? And that would be useful for the, for the students and for the teachers as well. So meaning they need to, they, they started adapting also to technologies, but somehow, sometimes there, there are no opportunities. Yeah, but it's good that there are also other universities that are helping at uh, these public school uh, schools in the Philippines. Uh, we are running out of time, so can we just have one last question? Question for for Mom Ruiz. Mom, uh, do these students who had this internship abroad has the advantage of uh, uh, having the employment here easily compared to those who do not have this internship abroad. And they be easily hired here. Yes, ma'am. It has a competitive advantage once they work abroad already. They have this internship. Yes, ma'am. It has an impact on their employment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.